morning. morning. Happy Mother's Day. Today's gospel reading begins where we left off last week. Last week we ended chapter four, uh, verse 14, chapter 14. We're on verse 15 today, so you missed what you missed last week, you're not gonna hear about again this week. <laughs> I'm not gonna repeat last week's sermon. Because today we hear, we have the first reference, the first reference of a Greek word we often hear translated as Holy Spirit, parakletos. And this word is truly untranslatable in a short way. So we're gonna do the long version. <laughs> it encompasses helper, comforter, advocate, counselor, mediator, broker, literally, in Greek literature of, this, of the time of the writing of this gospel, it was someone called in, called in to give witness to court, called in to plead for someone charged, to help someone. It's an expert called in to give advice, someone called in to lift the spirits of depressed soldiers, to help cope with life, to take away our inadequacies that we might feel. The, those original readers, listeners of this gospel would have heard and understood all of these definitions with the usage of this word parakletos in this gospel. Now today's gospel is a setup, meaning you need to come back on Thursday for Ascension Day. <laughs> and then two weeks from today, we get assaulted by Pentecost. Today's gospel is a setup for both of those events. It seems to me, it seems to me that today Jesus is asking us, is saying to his disciples and to us, I'm sending you out to do difficult things in the world. They're going to be difficult. And I am going to be sending you another parakletos who will guide and enable you to do the work once I have left. Did you hear that? Another? Another parakletos? What's, what Jesus is implying there is he's the first parakletos. He is all of those things that we heard and more. And he's sending another. I also think Jesus is saying this parakletos, this new parakletos, is Jesus' continuing presence among us. I think, I think in a way, Jesus is consoling those he's leaving behind. Consoling them and saying, you need to continue doing the work we've begun to establish this reign of God. John's gospel was written in the age of empire. First recipients of this gospel were people surrounded and controlled by agents of that empire, which imposed dominion through imperial power and force. This entire gospel, and our passage today in particular, promises a different way, a different way of being and experiencing the world. And the focus, the focus is on God's love found in Jesus' commandments. And Jesus reflects that this is not easy, thus the sending of another paraclete to help. This love Jesus wants embraced, it's not a feeling. We want it to be a feeling, but it's not. And it's not an abstract theory. It is lived reality. It is a lived reality revealed in the life, work, relationships, and actions of Jesus feeding the hungry, touching the lepers, healing the sick, speaking and acting respectfully toward women. Jesus didn't always do that, but he did, he did so most times. We're not doing that gospel today. <laughs> you know, instead of imperial power based in strength of arms, Jesus asked that we imagine a world that has at its goal the well-being of all people regardless of social status. 
So I find this gospel section, this passage, difficult to dissect. Jesus ties love to keeping his commandments and the sending of a paraclete who will be with us forever among us, in us. That Jesus will be gone, but he will be in the Father, and us in him, and him in us. Can't help but think, what was this gospel writer smoking? <laughs> the retired CDSB professor Linda Clater um, has observed that the word in is such a small word to have such an enormous impact in this gospel. Jesus says today, on that day when he leaves, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. I find that hard to follow, frankly. And it also seems extraordinarily personal and private, and maybe slightly invasive. <laughs> but this private secret understanding of this passage seems to be out of sync with the overarching message of the gospel. That's why many believe that this is a mistranslation. It shouldn't be in should be transferred among, making it less private and personal and in sync with the gospel, more communal, more communal in nature. Something Jesus lived out in his ministry and life, being among and with the people. Translated that way, the second paraclete would literally be the one who is called to be at our side to stand by and up for us. This second paraclete would be a force on the move, much like Jesus' life was one of being on the move. Saying this other paracletos is among us makes this presence communal, not private, and at least for me, a heck of a lot more understandable. John's gospel took its final shape at the end of the first century and was presented to a community that was defeated, abused, angst-filled, and none of whom actually having ever known Jesus. This passage is meant to give them hope that their faith, their belief, and their actions mimicking Jesus could change the world. And then the last sentence of this gospel changes the focus from the disciples to whom Jesus is talking to a new audience, this new audience that's hearing this gospel and all of the hearers of the gospel in the years to come, including us. Jesus says, they, us, who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This promise of Jesus' presence and the presence of the other parakletos to those who keep his commandments of love and serve one another is again not a command to have feelings. It is not even a feeling of certainty about our faith and our beliefs. The love is the actions, the doings, how we show up in the world in our mirroring, mirroring of Jesus' actions in the world around us today. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples to exemplify this point. Jesus died in a manner set aside for criminals to prove his love. It seems to me we should be hearing this gospel as asking us to see Jesus as present among us when we keep those commandments to love and serve. If we were to look around us, can we see Jesus on the move? Can we see Jesus in our actions, in the actions of those with whom we have chosen to be in community? We are not only to notice action, but participate in those actions, in that movement. This 
this gospel, this gospel which introduces the parakletos, I believe is actually a wonderful one and an apt one to have on Mother's Day. For some, this untranslatable word can partially sum up our relationship with our mother figures. Helper, comforter, advocate, counselor, mediator, broker, someone who cheers us up and cheers us on, a person who helps us cope with life and maybe provides relief from feelings of inadequacy. Someone who is always among us, whether still living with us or now in, or now in the nearer embrace of God. For in that latter stage, they are still with us, among us. Happy Mother's Day.